So whenever you've collected new data, you need to do a common method bias test to make sure that no systematic bias was uh, is influencing your data. For example, uh, a systematic bias might be due to a single method of data collection. Like if you gave students a survey and you only gave it uh, gave out one survey, um, there could be some systematic influence, some systematic confound um, biasing your data that is unrelated to the actual measures you use to collect the data. And this is bad. Um, you don't want there to be a heavy common method bias or else, um, well, you have flawed data. And if you do have flawed data, uh, the only correction for that is to collect more data. So we want to avoid that. Well, there are many different methods for testing common method bias, um, and it's sort of evolved over the years. My favorite, and the one I'm going to demonstrate right now, is uh, the Lindell and Whitney's method that uses a marker variable. And I'll show you how we do this in PLS graph. So let me get rid of this here. Basically, you've got this measurement model, right? All of these have their own little um, indicators in there. Um, you've already cleaned it, trimmed it, it looks good, you've got good convergent discriminant validity, good reliability, and now you're ready to test common method bias. The way you do that is you add another construct to this measurement model, and it needs to be something that is theoretically dissimilar to the other variables in the model. So I'm going to add apathy as my marker variable here. Apathy is not too related uh, to these other variables. And so any correlation it does have with the other variables is possibly due, due to some systematic um, influence, like a common method bias. So let me toggle these in so we're not looking at them. Now, as uh, you can always come up with some argument for why any variable has a relationship with any other variable. So you really just want to get a good close match where where the marker variable is for the most part unrelated to the other variables in the model. Then you just run it like normal and you look at the output. Let me shrink this down to size. Oop, I closed it. Oh, you can see it well enough. Um, you go down to the correlations of latent variables in the dot list output and you look at the correlations between the marker and the other variables so here's the correlation with satisfaction and the marker very low correlation the highest correlation is between ethical concerns and apathy yeah that makes sense now if you square this correlation you'll get the maximum shared variance um, with the other variables in the model so that ends up being a little bit less than point, or a little bit less than one percent variance uh, that is shared in common with this other construct. And so we would say that we don't have a common method bias because that's a very small amount of shared variance. Now, if these values were like point three, I'd start getting worried. Um, and if if you do have a common method bias, like I said, the only way to fix that really <laughs> is to collect more data, and that's no fun. Well, that's it. Oh, you know, one more thing. If that doesn't work, let's say you do have point threes there, well, you can try one of these other methods, the Harmon's one-factor or single-factor method. It, it's not very stringent. Um, you can almost always slip under the under the tape with this one. So you might want to combine it with maybe the Podsikoff method. Um, or this one's super easy, uh, examining the correlation matrix. Just making sure none of the correlations in that matrix I just showed you are greater than 0.9. Uh, that almost never happens. And if it does happen, there are probably some other issues with your data as well. That's it.